Oh, oh, oh. 
church and the sleep is heavy. I kneel down and raise my hand. I See, I've, I've been in meetings. I kneel down and raise my hand and I say, God, I will be like this, like primary school punishment. If you don't pray in Adulam, it, it, is, it is demonic. The devil is playing Juba, Aludo, 10 times with your life. You don't know. You, you, you are about to die out. I'm not saying it because I will give you something. I'm saying it because Jesus has come. The man at the pool said, Jesus, I have no man to put me in. When the water is dead, and Jesus said, ah, I never knew that for this 38 years, the only thing that has been disturbing you has been foolishness. The water is dead, you are looking for a man, and Jesus is here. My senior colleague said, that you will come and you will spend two hours. Jesus will be here and you will not know. <laughs> oh my. My secret place. Aya ho. Aya ho. Oh, Adula. Aya ho. Aya ho. My secret place. Let me tell you something, in case you don't know. Young people, I've shared it with many of my friends. It is C. If Gio tells me that when he was young, it was hard to be a Christian, I will tell him that now, it is harder to be a Christian, to be chased as a young person. It is harder now. <laughs> so, you don't know what you are joking with, though. You think it's to, it's to finish secondary school, get admission, go into higher institution. As you enter your institution, you will know that what, what, you, what, what you are facing is a joke. It was before that when you don't wear a bra, they look at you like you are mad. Now, nah, it's national anthem. It's, it's national anthem. Our, our, our generation has lost it. We are trying to reform them. They don't understand. And you talk to somebody, give your life to Christ. Person say, I beg, I beg. I will just say that, don't worry, don't give your life to Christ. Very soon, we will know the difference. You think I'm following Jesus or nothing? Oh. You think I'm following Jesus or nothing? 
If it's your own, some of us are smart. We'll do it and we'll make it. You think we are here? We are here following Jesus for nothing. Ah. The angel told Elijah, he said, eat, for the journey is far. The journey is too great for you. You don't know. That's why you are not eating. The day you know that the journey is great, you will begin to eat. Because if you don't eat now, very soon, there will be no food. Bible says, and you go to a time, the word of the Lord was scarce. There will be no food. You enter a land, there is no food to eat. Apostle Edu was sharing, he said he was in Kenya for two months, and he was preaching five, day, five, five times per day. He said, if, when you don't have word, you will know that it is hard to preach. He said, I will preach five times, and I will preach different messages for two months, and I was preaching every day in different churches. It's now that you have, you have time. Ah, the evil days are coming when you will, you will not be able to, you will not have teeth to eat. You will not have teeth. Your knees are strong. Pray now. The time will come when you will not be able to kneel and pray. My church to us this night. Go in this thy mind. But you know the truth. You don't even have might to go in. So if we leave you to go now, ah, ah, you, you will, a calamity will happen. That's why we are telling you eat. 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 Oh my. Eat. The journey is far. Tell your neighbor, the journey is far. Don't play with your death. See. The day that the devil succeeds, Allah will always tell us. Kai. One of the people that have impacted my life in prayer is Claire. The woman that prays, she doesn't need to tell you to join me. The emission of heat, you will catch it. Say, if the devil succeeds in killing your prayer life, he has killed you. See, you cannot be a Christian that, you, that does not pray. See, the devil is just there, waiting for you to come. Oh, I think I don't have this time. But I've said, sir, the journey is far. It's now. Do, do you know, do you think the angel was joking when he came the second time and said, Elijah, I said you should eat. You have not eaten well. Elijah, you have not eaten well. A man that could run faster than chariots. He saw a woman and he fled. He said, Kai, Kai, uh, this, 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 this apostolic ministry is under attack. Elijah fled from Jezebel. The ministry is under attack. Elijah, come. You don't have stature. Come and eat. Elijah ate. They said, no. Your stature, have, you have not built stature again. Elijah, eat. The journey is too great for you. We are not joking from heaven. The journey is great. Christians will soon be scarce in the Janiki. <laughs> Christians will soon be scarce in the Janiki. There will be a great falling away. See, I'm not telling you emotional words. There will be great falling away. Mighty men will fall. It's the journey is far. Mighty men will fall. The Bible says that the young men, eh, the young men will faint. They that run will utterly stumble. See, but those that wait. You think, you think we, are, we are praying long in Adunam because we like prayer. You think prayer is easy. Come and hold this mic and lead prayer for 10 minutes. You know that it's not easy. 10 minutes here is like, it's like praying one hour there. It's not easy. We are telling you, we are sounding the clarion call. Men will fall. In this land. See, I'm not telling you that let's pray for men, not to fall. Men will fall. Mighty men will utterly fall. But it's these people that have the secret place. It's a day that dwell. Allah said, we, we don't visit, we dwell. We live there. Mighty men will fall. Aye. If you leave me now, where will I go? 
If you leave me now, where will I stand up? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are my anchor for life. Oh. No power in that. No guilt in life. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's best cry to find a breath. Hey, Jesus commands my death. Hey, no power. build stature so that the stature that you can gather will be what we say go in this if you don't have mine die here yeah. die die Jesus if you don't make me I will die here yeah. so that we come and miss your maid oh, you, are, you are wasting space you are you are you will come to church on Sunday you are wasting space just die you think we, are, we, we will not mourn again you see now pastor snub on boobies and die it's not, it's not the order of social media. I saw one, that was another pastor slums and died. You are wasting space, die. There are two ways to die. It's either you die until God can raise you or, you, or God will kill you and raise another man. If God has committed anything great to your hand and you are wasting, God will kill you. He will commission it to another man. You see, the kingdom does not have time to waste resources. We cannot commit great things to you and you are wasting our resources. You are wasting heavens. See, God is not a waster. God gave one Jesus to die and he raised all of us as Jesuses unto him. You think you are a man, you are a Jesus on earth. So if you don't see Jesus through you die, you are wasting. The kingdom is suffering. My father in law, Christina is sitting, we say, Devil has men. Every place, companies have men. The only place where you don't see men is God. I will be saying, I, I, I sought for a man. God is always searching for a man. God never tire. When, when even, uh, even the guy that saw the vision, he said, ah, and he said, I sought for a man. You, are you not a man? When I get to heaven, I will ask him, are you not a man? So then I say, Lord, here I am. Send me. When God was looking for man, God could not find him. So, it was when he heard that there was an advertisement on Vanguard that, Kai, we are looking for men to recruit in this kingdom. He now said, Kai, let me position myself. There's a way you position yourself and God can find you. There's a way you can be playing church, you can be preaching. And heaven is the crime. We sought for a man. Oh, we sought for a man. And the great one, we cry. And you are there. You wear suits and tie. And you have a nice walking step. Come on, bless you, bro. Let's say good morning. Say you are blessed. Kai, and heaven is saying, who is this one again? 
You have the languages of the spirit in your mouth. But heaven does not know you. See, this Adulam that we came to is a conclave. We don't need thousands of people. God wants to raise men. Men! He's not raising babies. It is babies that come in thousands. And when they leave, they spread back. We are raising men. That tomorrow when we walk on the streets and you see a harlot, you look at her and say, Shagabahateleva. Para. And the girl begins to drag your skirt. Lead me to your Jesus. Because when they saw you, they didn't see you, they saw Jesus. You don't understand. Ye are gods. And all of you are the sons of the Most High. I just came to set our hearts. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Adulam, we can travel into the spirit. We don't need a song to travel into the spirit now. Just position your antenna and catch the frequency. With Jesus' joy, can we celebrate our pastor? He's our father. Hallelujah. I said I was going to do this. Celebrate men of God that come around. Celebrate Pastor Femi Adefila. He's, he's, he's a senior minister in this ministry, and we don't take it for granted that he's in our midst. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Mama, allow me, please. Can we celebrate Mommy, allow me? That is my own grandmother. My grandmother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, can we celebrate Dickiness Hope, Hope Mona? Can we celebrate her? Can we celebrate Dick in O Ba? Okwane, can we celebrate Dick in Okwane? Hallelujah. That's one man I respect. If that man chants here now. He who dwells in the midst of the cherubims shine for Guy, you don't understand. You see, Adulam will see things. We, this one we are just, you know, when your engine is, um, is having high friction due to rust, yes, what we do to you, we lubricate it. Eh? You can use a lubricant like oil, like grease. Eh? You understand? Eh? After this one, anyone that touches you, you'll be lubricated. Don't understand. Hallelujah. Please let's celebrate my very own dear pastor. He's the general overseer of Great Commission Ministries. And I think the man in charge of PFN, youths. Um, please help me celebrate him. Pastor, please.
Can we usher him in? Pastor, please. Go up. Please, thank you. Um, hallelujah. Let's celebrate my own very friend and brother, my senior partner in ministry, AP Mike Sheke. Please celebrate AP Mike Sheke. You know, hallelujah. You know, there, there is something that we don't understand though. If you have very close friends, regardless of how close the people are, understand the person that is senior in grace. I may be the convener of Adulam. There are some men. There are some men that when I was praying, I was asking the Lord, Lord, can you just, just, just see? I will not tell these people. I will fix them. And I will beg them. I know I said, no, tell them. So I told them, sir, you are, you are director of prayer for Adulam. He said, okay, no problem, sir. Celebrate up. AP Mike again. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate. Have you ever studied for 10 hours before? Have you ever read for 10 hours? They are joking. They have not started. Please celebrate. Oh my. Celebrate AP Godwin. Lilich. Hallelujah. 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 Please let me celebrate. You see, I, I served in Fekka, Nigeria, chapter level, as prayer secretary, and I had a vice president. When I was done serving, the vice president now gave me an office to say, take, take this office. So I became vice president, and she became president. Please let me celebrate. Arababa. You don't understand. When you see us row, you think that you think that she was serving under me. Bra Bra Vincent um what's the his name now? No, not Joshua. The other Vincent. Bra Victor Vincent to say, Obukata, where is your girlfriend? I say, sir, she's my president. Say no, that's your girlfriend. Let me celebrate Alero Shake. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now I'm going to be celebrating one of my very good friends as he comes up to lead us. You see, I'm breaking this. People have not sat down since we came to Adulam. I pray that you will see that in Jesus' name. Please, uh, one, of, one of the finest music ministers I've seen is the teacher of the word. He's a man of prayer. He's a man of the Holy Ghost. Oh, man. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Please let me celebrate A.P. Joshua Vincent. Hallelujah. Please, let's lift up our hands to Jesus. Let's just pray in tongues. Let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the praise. Come on, give him all the praise. God is about to conscript some of us. God is here. As you pray in tongues, new tongues will begin to come. As you pray in tongues, God will begin to open your eyes to see. Alain do breaky bedo shadana mana to break a bedo shadabade. I've seen the God of wonders with miracles me. There's a gift and talent, the spoke prophetically. 
I will tell you what we want to do. I'm on the mountains of Elijah, Paul and Timothy. <laughs> I want to see that power at work inside of me. Now we are going to sing that song again. I'm on the mountains of Elijah, Paul and Jesus Christ. Greater is he. He says a greater Solomon has come. That same power Jesus said. <laughs> he said that I have given you all as the Father has given me. He has handed all authority to us. So now there is a power and a grace we want to come in and that's the power and the grace of Jesus it says and everywhere he went what happened who can tell us signs and wonders were wrought. so that is what we crave this evening so listen this season of worship is a season of prayer we're actually praying, but we're just praying with songs. Do you understand me? Don't, 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 don't get in the euphoria of the excitement of singing. We are actually praying. Our hearts will pray now. I want to see the power at work inside of me. I'm tired of the status quo of empty tongues, blank tongues of coming to church as a religious person of having all forms of godliness and denying the power with no power you are godly but you cannot raise people up like a god more than me there's gotta be there's gotta be it's gotta be more than this you know the level you are so you want to cry for more. We are praying. We are desperate people. We want more, more, more. We are desperate people. We want more, more, more. Cross and tired of the status quo. Ah, there's gotta be more than this. Ah, there's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. We are not waiting for songs. I won't give you songs. So don't wait for songs to pray. Okay. Hey. Oh, the worship of me wants to be free. From the cares of life we see. Let me let me open on it. Yes, the worship of me needs consistency to lift my hands and give you praise when no one's around. Listen, listen, listen. If you want to test that you know to put, not here, it is when you are alone. So something wants to fall up right now. Something is falling off. It's falling off your life. It's falling off your life right now. If you cannot sustain for 30 minutes, it means you've not started praying. 
So it means that the worshiper in you wants to be free. Worshiper is not only a singer. Songs is not all there is in worship. <laughs> hey! Give me you. My voice can wait in Adula. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Jesus, please give me you. Lord, give me you. Hey. Lord, give me you. Amen. Don't just don't just speak in tongues. Don't just speak in tongues. Adulam is the making place. Adulam is the making place. The midwife, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, in before Zion travel, she brought forth. There is a bringing forth here right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Hey, hey. Everything else could wait if it is your voice that you are still hope to. Give me you. Hope and not to lay. Hey, give me you. Hey, give me you. Hey, give me you. Hey. Hey. From within me, spirit be saved. Holy fire burn upon my heart. Holy fire burn upon my heart. Hey. Go. 
power and work in me to change in everything. Hey, we know we rest to Christ. Hey, we rest all in everything. God is restoring somebody right now. God is restoring somebody right now. Hey, swallow your pride. To the school of the spirit. Hey. Don't you know that ah, in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey. A little, a little day until the day is done. The power will go. We change and reunite in everything, oh God. Hey. In obedience to God. The reason why you are getting tired is because you have not encountered the spirit of supplication and grace. When you see, prayer has its own power. <laughs> We don't pray in the flesh. Come on, begin to seek that praying power. That praying energy. 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 I cannot know you by myself. Unless you take over. I cannot pray. This pain on my own, oh, not to take over, take over, take over, we take over, I cannot know you by myself, oh, oh, you are here. Come on, ask for the praying power. There's a praying power. When you begin to pray in that realm, you cannot be tired. You begin to pray. New tongues begin to come. 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 Hey! 
The glory of the Lord is in this place. Oh, in my day. That is right, Dominique. And no more. In the Aquapa Cape Canina. In the Aquapa Cape. Aquapa. Ale Kubele. Ale Kubele. Ale Kubele. Ale Kubele. Ale Kubele. Don't wait for the song. Ayako, 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 Ayako. When we hold, that's what she wants. It's not an exaggeration. No argument. Who we call you, now hear me you be. Huh. It's not an exaggeration. Hey. No argument. Hey, I'm a couple. Shaga bodoza na. Hey, I'm the crumbi da ba couple. Get the dust shut up and a couple. Ela gada 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 si ana ma kopero, elora, elora, hey. Sweet lady, me where my boss is here and got us. Let me walk upon the wall forever. You will call me. Take me deep. Banana man, my faith will be the strong in the presence of my Savior. See me free. Something is happening right now. Alone, alone, alone. I want to run in a complete circle. I love the beggar, the beggar, the beggar, the beggar. Roba goba goba kopra gebe de gala beshe, ete gada gada gala de elapa ele belade soko goba, etro bata gala gada gala. Ragadagabakapu, elogo dogo dogo lebe, ina kwa pedesha, 
a tua barca para que venha a gola de e a tua barca e derro a tua barca para que a da copa e o outro mano copa a tua barca para que a barca na na copa se eleva a tua barca para que venha a gola do cotinha e derro na mão para que a barca para que a água a te mene qua e o outro a te curar de mane sorte e a tua barca para que gaba a tua barca para que a tua a tua Hey, when you come to draw, to draw, to draw, open me again. Hey, we come to drink, we come to drink, <laughs> to drink from you, Ayaka.
We are about to hear God's word. But we will pray one prayer for about two minutes. God, what did you do to Joshua Selman? What did you do to Arome Osai? What did you do to Tolu Agbola? What did you do to Reverend Esiri? Ah, what did you do to Oropo? What did you do to Oya Kilome? If Oya Kilome enters this place now and he moves like this, there will be nothing stopping him. If any he enters there and pulls the suit and does it like this, we fall like paper. That is, oh man, what did you do to these people? It is the same Jesus they touched. They did not touch a, a 5G Jesus while we are using a 4G. Ah, ah, ah. For two minutes, God, what did you do to these people? Do, do half to me. Do half. Don't do everything you did to Arome to me. Do half. Just give me half. Just give me half. Oh, Jesus. In case you don't know, miracles are happening already. I, you are still waiting for prayer points. God, what you did to Selman, do it to me. Obukata is here. Hey! I was telling myself in the bedroom. I said, I will keep shouting my name everywhere I go. Because they don't know me. If someone enters here now, he does not need introduction. 80% know him. Oh, it is the same Jesus. Shama Helako. This same Jesus. Jesus, can you touch me tonight? What you did to Jesse Jankfa? Oh, do to me. What you did to John CW, do it to me. Oh God, what you did to Tony Ritchie, do it to me. What you did to Theophilus, do it to me. What you did to Abe, do it to me. Oh my, In case you don't know, Abe stayed in this Ayatoro. Abe Lokumai. She was a Muslim who found Jesus by sickness. Yakakatuma. Do it to me, Jesus. 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 What you did to this man, do it to me. A boy you raise, do it to me, Jesus. Do it to me, Jesus. Amoy, we come make it and not our shame. We come make it and not ashamed. You know our weakness. You know my strength. Oh my. You know my weakness. You know. You know my strength. You see my Jesus. Oh. I can be real, I can be 
Olajide Akinkwelu is a trained agriculturist from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, and currently an agripreneur and also into other businesses related, of which one is importation of cars. He is a preacher of the gospel with a passion to raise accurate and spiritually aligned young people. He is married to Olu Adam Ilola, and they both live in Ibadan, Oyo State. With Jesus' joy in our hearts and a clap innovation, can we receive Pastor? Hola, Jide, to Zikel, Akin Pelu. It is important to know that. God is intentional with our lives. And if peradventure you were invited here and you didn't plan it, disbelieve the fact that it was an accident. Disbelieve it. And one of the ways by God makes his man. I have two problems. One of it is what just happened now. It's, it's a burden. I will forget all I want to say. You know, there were 12 disciples. And amongst the 12, there were the three. Yet, amidst the three, there was one. 
And so, anytime weightier matters are being discussed, he brings the three. It was more like a secret court. But there are certain things that are even weightier than weightier matters. It was only John that had access to them. And when you read the story of the matter dog, you will realize that everyone was killed by the hands of men. It was only John that escaped. It was because he saw something that others didn't see. There was something he saw. They put him inside burning hot oil. Nothing happened. They knew that this one has done business with something greater. And that no man has the ability to bring him down. And I realized that there is such a dimension of intimacy that a man can have with God. If only he has the time. But at the same time, no man, no man comes to the Father except he draws him. And so it happens to be that this gathering is one of the places where God draws men unto himself. Tonight, I'd like you to listen. And when I mean listen, I'm not saying you should listen with these two ears. Because the things of the spirit are spiritual and it is not air with physical ears. That's why the scripture says, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And in the book of Revelation, you will hear the Bible says that let him that has an ear hear what the spirit says to the church. That one that we used to hear the things of the spirit is not this one. It is an ear. These ones are ears. It takes an ear to hear the voice of the spirit. Please open that ear tonight. Father, we, we thank you for all that you have begun to do with us. We ask that you supply us more help. Supply us more help. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please take your seat. I will do scriptures for a few minutes. And then we'll begin to monitor the way the energy increases. To the point to which we'll be able to pray. I'd like to appreciate the privilege that I have to be standing here today. I don't even know how it happened. It must have been the hand of God. Pastor. Thank you, sir. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to speak tonight very quickly on how God makes his men. How God makes his men. First Samuel chapter 22 and verse 1 to 2. Very quickly. Please pay attention. If you get to a point, when you feel like praying, you can stand on your feet and begin to pray. Because the energy will, will grow gradually. Please stay on the keyboard for me so I can, I can flow. That will give me the ability to flow easily. One of the things that also gives me the ability to flow easily. It's not just me. I realize that if any man is ministering under the Spirit of God, one of the things that helps them to dispense the heart of God is the hunger in the heart of the people. There are things that many of the times are not necessarily part of the things that you, re you receive from the Holy Spirit. But while you speak, the heart of men will begin to draw virtues. It was not Jesus that was interested in releasing the virtue that came to the woman with the issue of law. It was because she came and touched the hem of his garment. And he knew that something left him. First Samuel chapter 24. And it came to pass when Saul returned from following the Philistines. That it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel. Oh, are we reading the right verse? And went to seek David. All right. And his men upon the rocks of white gold. First Chronicles chapter 11. Okay, let's leave that for now. Let's do Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Please listen to me carefully tonight. Let's do verse 17 and 18. How God makes his men. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers 
of men. And I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Please go back to verse 1. Oh, sorry, verse 17. Sorry. Verse 17. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, 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 alleluia. Alle, 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 alleluia. Alle, 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 alle. Ale, 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 alleluia. Shaka bala la. Ale, 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 alleluia. He says, I will make you to be called. One of the things that you must first understand is that when he calls you, all your responsibility is as simple as to come. He said, and I will make you to become. So he has the sole responsibility of making a man to become. So, now listen to me. There are no templates to how God makes men. Because the process with which he's going to take you differs from the other person. You will make mistakes to write a book out of the way God made you out of the wilderness and give to everyone you meet for them to begin to take readings from it. Because your interest is that such man become, becomes a man like you are. Because the process that Jesus is going to take every man through differs. It is only in his dictionary. Unfortunately, no man had access to it. You can be raised by an apostle and you turn out to be a teacher. A teacher can raise a prophet because the spirit does not necessarily have to carry the same fragrance. The technology of making men is not about cloning. Unfortunately, that is what we do in church today. Everyone wants to preach like some man. Because we have seen the dimension of God upon his life. You do not know that there is an original version of you that is locked up in God. It will only take seeking to launch into it. He said, I will make you to become. No man has the ability to make another man to become. The making to become of every man is only in the hand of Jesus. And it takes only men who will leave their nets to follow him, to be made, to become what he wants them to be. Hear me this morning. He was speaking the other this evening, the other time. And he said, every time is only God who seeks for a man to use. Because the discipline of raising men that are usable by God is a little bit narrow. We'll get there. Don't worry. If I'm not careful, I won't be able to say everything. I want to talk about four steps. Don't forget I said was that the things that God will take every man through to make them does not have to be the same. I realize that the way I began, if I'm not careful, I will lose the message. And I will ascend too early. Let's, let's take it slowly. In Mark chapter 1, where we read from, that's the first thing I'm talking about. First, the, the four steps by which God makes his men and the first thing I'm talking about is the calling. The calling. The calling. 
or what you call the call. But I tag it the calling. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. It was a one statement. A, a, it was a statement rather. That brought them out of what they were doing and brought them to Jesus. He didn't need to persuade them. He called them. Please hear me tonight. Because the perspective of call to many of us is that you are in the wilderness somewhere and then you hear the voice of Jesus crying aloud. Say, my son, there are many of us that our own kind of calling will not be like that. Can I say to us tonight that everyone that is seated here has been called by Jesus. And his ultimate interest is to raise giants out of us. And he will find it difficult to raise giants until you pass through Adulam. God help us. I'm trying to be careful. Because I'm also trying to weigh the kind of persons that I, there are certain things that, that, that was, I was almost saying. And I don't want it to be too bogus, neither to confuse some of the young fellows that are amidst us. And when he calls a man, first it is a call to be with him. In Mark chapter 3 and verse 14, the scripture says he called the twelve first that they might be with him because it is only in being with him that a man can be made. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. The ultimate or the first responsibility of a called man is first to be with him. And whether he will send them to preach or not is now a probability. Meanwhile, the ultimate interest of Jesus is at the end of the day to raise a man of full stature, sufficient enough to be sent to preach. But first of all, it will not appear like that because that is not the first line of action. The first thing he does is to make him to be called. To make him to be called. So I'd like to say to us tonight that every one of us has a calling. Oh, you are a politician. There is a call upon your life. And it is as simple as taking the gospel of Jesus to the nooks and crannies of all there is about what you do. You are a businessman. The interest of Jesus is that he is magnified in your area of business. Because you can be a prophet even in the market can be a prophet in your shop. Men can come to you and by discernment, you know the kind of money the person is bringing. You know, it's unfortunate that our understanding of a call is that everyone is called to carry a microphone. Unfortunately, that's not the true testimony of, of, of the true testimony of what it means to be called. Because it was not everyone Jesus called that heard their voice. There were many other disciples who did so mighty things but their names were not mentioned. You remember that it was in Luke chapter 24 that you began to hear the name of Cleopas. Meanwhile, he had walked with Jesus. He knew all about his life. There were no men like Saul who only read about him. But they were not heard. So all there is about their calling is not carrying microphone. I want to talk about some things tonight. Such that we will understand. I was, I was talking to a group of persons some days ago. They called it a worship evening. And I realized that the understanding that they have for a worship service or a worship evening is to sing songs. Correct? Little did you know that all there is about worship is not songs. The entire worship service or the entire service, when we come to church like this, all that we do from the person who opened the door to the person who shared the grace is worship. You don't know. The people who came two hours early to come and sweep the church have begun their own worship service. 
The janitor that came to open the church door was the first person who came to worship. You don't know. Oh, you, your, your, your belief or your understanding of worship is when people raise their voice and they begin to sing songs. It's so unfortunate that that's why when we come, we say, let's sing worship song first. And then we sing the song on slow beat. Because some of the songs you sing on slow beat, when you translate them to fast beat, it becomes praises, correct? You lied. Because the man that is on the keyboard knows that he's offering a worship. The man in the sound room, his face may not be known by no man. But it's part of the condiments that God is using to raise an altar of worship. And you will not know. You will think it's the person who is speaking tongues on the altar. That is the pillar by which worship is attending, attending unto God. You lie. Because, oh, oh my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's take that song. Hallelujah. Samuel chapter 22. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. Verse 2. Verse 2 very quickly. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt, this not just was. And everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, oh, the testimony of your life is that nothing good has come out of you. You are the kind of man he's looking for to put in the king. You are a debtor, maybe not in money. But when he looks for men to put in the cave, you are the first set of people he calls. And like I said earlier, many of us will not hear voices, but he will withdraw money from your pocket. And when lack became very obvious, you will draw near to him. There are many people that will come to church not because it was easy. Lack or will make them go. Because when things are going well for you, you will remember him. You know, it was a story of a young man who was collecting 10,000 naira as, as offering. I mean, as salary. And he was paying tithe of 1,000 naira. And suddenly a man of God prayed for him and he was promoted to collect 100,000 naira in a month. And it became difficult for him to pay a tithe of 10,000. The guy felt, how will I pay a whole monthly salary that I was collecting initially? Uh, no. And then the man asked him, what, what happened? He said, it's, it's not easy. Let's pray that God brings you back to 1,000. The man said that he, didn't, he has not prayed. Unfortunately, he was brought back. God will bring you to where you will be, you will be faithful. He will do all in his capacity to bring you to the place of faithfulness. And so everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt, do you know that it was not kings? They were not priests. They were not mighty men that came to the cave. You may be weak and powerless. You may be broke. You may not even be knowledgeable. You may be men like Peter who didn't go to school. But the Bible says he brought all of them. There were 400 men that gathered unto him. And they became mighty men in his hands. Mighty men. It happens to be that Adulam is not a place of drama. It's not a place to joke. That is why it does not admit proud people. It admits broke people. It admits, it admits the barren people in debt. Men 
men who are discontented of their status. But adventure, what you have today is sufficient for you. He's not looking for men like him. He said, oh, I'm a good singer. I already know how to do it in my own best way. When I show up in my church, everybody goes silent. He doesn't need men like you. He's looking for people who are discontented. Men who have all the things, yet they see themselves as men who have nothing. That's why scripture says in Matthew chapter 5, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Poverty of the spirit does not mean they have nothing. It means that with all they have, they were yearning for more. Don't worry. Let me, let me leave. Heal my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it all. And make me Fill my cup, Lord. Ah, I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. There is something I understand in God. He may not call you, you have the ability to call yourself. That's, I didn't want to say some things because many of us will not understand it. You might not be part of the ones that heard this voice audibly and say, Come after me, but you can yet call yourself. By taking responsibilities. Oh. You don't have to be a pastor to be anointed. That is what it means to call yourself. You don't have to be ordained to carry power. That is what it means to call yourself. You can call yourself. I remember back then in school, until I was in 300 level, nobody knew me in fellowship. Because my unit was technical and organizing unit. And we were always behind the corner. Nobody will see us. I will wake up 5 a.m. by 6 a.m. I'm already on the road. Many times I will go to fellowship with my church life. And it happens to be that where, where we kept, we used to keep our instruments then, from where we worship is like from this place, probably to that junction. I think it's a bit further. Then I will carry these full range speakers. We had about three or four of them then. And these small ones like this, I will carry them on my head. Before the service starts, I'm already wet. To the point that I can't even show up and miss people because I'll be smelling. So I will hide myself in that room. But I was doing something that every other person was not doing. The belief system of the fellowship was that men in technical units are not spiritual. But when it was my turn, the story changed. The story changed. From serving there, I became the transport secretary of the fellowship. You see, it was, it was, it was dicey. So from being the, the transport secretary of the fellowship, I became the, they call it JCCF in some schools. In my school, we call it ICJCF. I became the ICJCF transport secretary again. So the burden to drive was almost more than the burden to pray. Oh, you are only praying because there was a need to do it, and that's why you are not seeing power. You are doing it because somebody called you to do it. When you do it, when, because nobody will see you, it begins to produce results. Because anything you do in this place is actually a waste of time. And I began to see things happen. Oh. I want to talk about certain things tonight and I hope I will have the privilege of saying it. I'm trying to say that God is interested in raising men who do not have sore names. Men who are not known, nameless, faceless people, people without a lineage that can be reckoned with, and he wants to raise them and make them giants, men that will handle the sword and slay 1,000 people. It is not natural for a man to carry the sword in his hand and a glue to his hand. Oh, something was involved. 
There is no chemistry or biology to explain it. If you use biology, you are a fool. It's because you don't understand the realm of the spirit. You know, it, there was a time David said he wanted to drink water from the well of death from, of Bethlehem. And three men went and faced the army of the Philistines. Because a man, he didn't give them instruction. He said, oh, that I may drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. The head is test. And they went on their ways. Three men. And you know what it means. They were holding swords in their hands. But there is a technology in the scriptures where you can hold your sword with one hand and carry other things on the other hand. When the wall of Jerusalem was to be built, you remember? By Nehemiah. And they were about to build the wall. They were building in the face of battle. And the Bible says they held their sword in one hand and hand throw it on the other hand. That when battle comes, they were ready to fight at the same time, ready to build. Men of stature. And I looked at Nehemiah. He was a nobody. But he went to the king with something. He said, according to the good hand of God that is upon me. And he spoke to him. The king didn't have choice than to respond positively to his request. I'm saying that if God does not intentionally put his hand on your head, you can draw his hand and put it on your head. It's a possibility. Oh. There are codes for it. When you know what to do, you won't be stranded. God help us. Let me get there first. Oh, halle, halle, hallelujah. Hmm. Halle, 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 halle. One of the burdens of our generation is that everyone wants to say something. Everyone wants to say something. What can I say to you tonight? If you have not heard God's voice, you are not qualified to speak. Until God speaks to you, men will not tremble at your voice. Have you not known why people come to church five years, ten years, and their lives are not changed? It is because it is not natural words that change a man. It takes power for a man to be changed. Anybody can preach sermon. An intelligent person can put scriptures together with scriptures and deliver a good sermon. It will not have capacity to change men. It's only the word that is living with spirit and power. That's why Jesus said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit. That is the one that has the ability to change a man. Uh, are you understand what I'm saying tonight? Feel my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it all, and make me. Number two. I don't want to press into all those things so much, so that we have time to pray. I want to trust that the energy will begin to grow. The second point I want to talk about is the training. In God making his men, he will not just call, he trains. So when he calls a man and you respond, the next line of action is that he will begin to train. The word I will make you is procedure, correct? Because making is a process. First Kings chapter 6. Let's, let's look at that. I want to compare something. First Kings chapter 6 and verse 7. And the house, uh, some of us, will, will, don't, don't be confused. When it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither. So that there was neither armor nor axe nor any tool of iron held in the house while it was in building. You remember, is it Jeremiah now? The scriptures have talked about the potter's house. Now, the instrument that came out of here that was mentioned came from the quarry, correct? It's a, it's a place of making, am I right? 
the potter's house is also a place of making. The experiences a man that comes from the potter's house will have differ from the one that comes from a, a, a quarry site. Have you seen a potter before? Have you seen how they work? Even if you have not seen it physically, you have seen it on Facebook. Respond. All right. Potters are very careful people, right? They do it gently. Many times, when the clay comes out with a wrong shape, they gently fix it. See, that story is not, it's not the same from something that comes from a quarry. They are both places of making. But the Bible says, they ha- I don't want to go to the story. When it was in building, that was the temple of God that was built by Solomon. He said they were built of stone that were made ready before they were brought. The reason was because at the temple site where the construction was to be made, there was no permission to apply anything on them. So if you must be useful at the temple site, you must be finished at the quarry site. So what happens is, when the bricklayer comes and carries you as a block, and they position you on this side and you didn't fit in, they change the direction, you didn't fit in. They, they, they turn you upside down, you didn't fit in. They are not permitted to walk on you, they leave you by the side. Because no noise must be heard in the place of use. There may be all manner of noise in the place of making. Because have you been to the quarry before? Oh, if your ears are not working well, you may live there dead. Because it is always full with, with, with a lot of noises. From the crusher to this one to the other one. You know, stones, the way they were made. But it is only the ones that graduated successfully from the quarry that become useful when they get to the temple site. I, 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 I've, been, I, I've lived in a village before. Have you seen somebody making an attempt to grind corn in a mortar? Have you seen mortar and pestle being used to grind something? You've not seen it? Uh, no, some of us, we are, we are touch people. So, when somebody makes an act, pastor would have seen that. Because they are, you know. <laughs> so, when somebody makes an attempt to use mortar and pestle, and you put grains in your mortar, by the time you begin to heat it, many grains will fly out. Everyone that flies out becomes useless. The best that can happen to them is that chickens, hens will come and pick them up. They will not be permitted to graduate from that point to the next point. But adventure that thing is going to be made to be used for pork or something else. From that point, they become food for chickens. Ordinary chicken. That is what happens to a man that refuses to be made in the quarry site. God will not address our lives the same way. Someone else is making may be like a man that comes from the potter's house. If you look at his life to take reading for your own life, you'll be a mess. Because your own experience may be that you will need to go to the quarry site where Amma will be tied on you. For many of us whose parents are not prayerful, you have more prayers to pray. Because if causes can be inherited, prayers can be inherited. And so many of the prayers they have prayed that will work for you naturally will not work because, you know, some of us, our parents are idolaters. Some of us, our, our fathers are drunkards. And if you are not careful, at the age of 40, the spirit of drunkenness will visit you in the night. And if there is nothing on your inside to, to, to fight it, it will win the war over your life. When I have the privilege of speaking to young people, I, I get filled with so much burden that many times I lack, I lack words. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait. They that wait. They that wait. They that wait. He said, I will stand upon my watch. He said, I will wait. I will wait. What it means to stand upon your watch is not standing to look. It is standing to wait. And what it means to wait is to pray. That's one side of it. Another side of waiting, I won't talk about it tonight. The training. Everyone that is called must be trained. Because if you are not trained, you can't become a tool in the hand of the master. And part of the things that will form your training will put a lot of constraint upon your life. Many a times, it will take food off your table. People 
that followed Jesus, they did not have access to food every time. You remember? There were many times that he would take them and teach for three days. Turning five loaves of bread and two fishes, multiplying it rather, was not for the disciples actually. His interest or intention was not because the disciples were hungry. If they like, let them start dying one by one, really. At the end of the day, they will eat. But they needed to go through the training because when your guy is not eating, when you and Gio travel usually, you carry food. When he has not started, you can't even go away. <laughs> because if he has not left, you can't leave. So when the boss was not eating, they didn't have the ability to eat. Yes, the ability to eat, even though they were hungry. So their provision was not for them because they must go through the training. Any man that is not sufficiently trained must not appear because it will make a fool of the gospel of Jesus. Mm. You know, Paul to Timothy, he says, study to show yourself Show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If he says rightly dividing the word of the word of truth, it means it is possible to wrongly divide it. If you are not well trained, you will wrongly divide the word of truth. Let me say this to you: that men who fall into error, they intentionally fall into it. Many of them they get into error because of the, the, the sincere and genuine hunger that they had. Jacob didn't intentionally want to sell his birthright, hunger pushed him. And it was what was available that he had. So many times when you are hungry for God, you eat what is available because you don't have discernment. And so your life becomes something else. And you will not know that you have begun to preach for another kingdom that is not the kingdom of Jesus. Oh, God must help us. And so that is why he's interested in the training. He's much more interested in the training that in the, than in the spending. He is not interested in commissioning you when you have not been well trained. One of the things that will form your training is a life that is sold out to prayer. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus, the Bible says he, he gave a parable to, to, them, to this hand that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Unfortunately, many of us do not understand the economy of prayer. You think it is only when you come and you are shaking and vibrating that you are praying. Oh, you will miss it because you will not have many opportunities to do that. A corner of your house can become a potter, a shrine where spirit meets with spirit. If you understand the technology. You know, a lady came to our house about a week or two weeks ago. She, she was a, a, my wife's friend. And she came and spent two nights. And when she was going, she, she left the gate and then she came back and said, I have to say this. She said, I've been going to people's houses. I've not been able to pray the way I was able to pray in your house. I felt so much peace. I, I wanted to pray for just a few minutes and I found myself continuing for long hours. I knew because it was because there was something there. If you enter my car, the spirit of prayer will possess you. I can assure you. Except, except, except you are representing a kingdom that is not of God. And if that is the case, you have to jump out. Because if I'm traveling for six hours, it is equivalent to six hour prayers. Yes. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. I like traveling alone because many times when I can shout and shout as though something was wrong so that you not say, hey, it's mad. So I travel alone. Yes. And it happens to be that the work I do will make me travel even if I didn't want to. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. When Jesus began with his disciples, he didn't begin with teaching them how to pray. He was praying for them to see how to pray. You see, the reason why people's life does not change for better is because you are trying to clone them, to teach them to do it. No, do it and let them see. Very soon, the spirit that is responsible for doing it will jump on them. Do we not teach prayers in church? How many church members respond to those teachings? Uh, that is how you know that what makes men pray in their homes is not teachings on how to pray or what to pray. It is the spirit. The word of God. I, I, I said something the other time. If I shout and the roof of this building removes, 
Many people will get home and still fornicate. But there is something that is being communicated that is beyond words, that has the ability to haunt you in your sleep. When you get to the bathroom, you will hear a voice behind you. Say, this is the way. Walk in it. You will hear my voice while you sleep. Because it was not just a voice. It's a spirit that is being communicated. And that's what makes the word powerful. You see, when we come, a sick person can come here. You see, all of us, we are growing. I'm, I'm getting there. I have not begun to, to, to manifest. A sick person can sit here now. And none of us here will point our hands towards the sick person and pray and shout and die and, and go creep and nothing will happen. Pastor Chris will come and say, house of him. And is healed. The same house of him that all of us have shouted and nothing happened. So it's not the grammar. It is the spirit behind the word. So when you build muscle, you can say, come out! And you shout like that from morning till night. Somebody will come and say, my name is Arome Osai. And the demon will disappear. It was just at the mention of his name, not the name of Jesus. Men of stature that waited in the place of making. And it happens to be that anything you didn't labor for when you are young, it becomes difficult to labor for them. I understand something very critical. That every major person God uses or is using in Nigeria, they were raised from to see little, little things. Little, little things began to happen. And, ah, this thing is real. Oh, I didn't need any encouragement from no man. The Holy Ghost was there to encourage. And I began to press. It was not easy. Hmm. The training. The reason why you are 